Hello and welcome to our very first episode of Andrew Asks. This is our new um, interview format in SSEW and I'm here with Tess McKean, the Hi. CEO of Talent Trust, to talk to us more about this amazing organisation um, and how members of our audience, we've got about 7,000 um, wonderful women in our closed community and two and a half thousand women in our SSEW business women's group and how members of our audience who may be part of businesses or have skills that they've learned throughout their careers can be married up with charities um, to, to do better to get involved with community projects through Talent Trust. Tess, can you tell us a little bit more about what Talent Trust does? Sure, absolutely. So Talent Trust is in essence a charity for other charities. Um, so our beneficiaries rather than being you know, a child that needs looking after or an elderly person that needs some care, um, our beneficiaries are other charities. And the way that we service them is by connecting them to senior business people with <clears throat> high breadth and depth of experience who are able to coach and mentor that charity to improve performance and increase their capacity. So um, are you looking for people with specific types of skills? Do they have to be people who are working in corporate kinds of businesses or is there a breadth that, that you're looking for? Yeah, I mean there's a real range and we've got over 150 mentors, that, which is what we call our volunteers, that work with us at the moment and it's everything from you know the usual marcoms strat planning organizational planning um through to we've got a film producer we've got quite creative people on board um what you find is that there is sort of no because there are so many charities two and a half thousand registered charities in singapore yeah there is no end to the number of different challenges that they might face so one might be really needing to explore their supply chain. We worked with an organisation who um, did food distribution around the island and we, they asked us to find someone with amazing experience in supply chain and logistics. Yeah. So it really does depend on what the charities are looking for, but we scope each project and bring the mentors together as a team in a very customised way. So the short answer to your question is yes, there are lots of different professions that we're looking for and it doesn't necessarily have to be corporate, but what we want is that, I guess, core business understanding so that you can take right. a broad view of what the charity is struggling with and have a lot of different solutions for them. Right, so it's helping them to manage, helping them to grow, mm -hmm. helping them to be more efficient and effective. Ex exactly. exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, what would mentors be doing on a day-to-day -day basis? It's not so much kind of getting their hands dirty. No, no. Yeah. So. Our whole objective is to create sustainable change for charities and we don't think that when you bring business people in to do the work on behalf of the charities, yeah. that is giving them kind of sustainable skills. It's the teach a man to fish argument essentially. Yes. So what the charity um, volunteers do is meet on a monthly basis as a okay. team of mentors. So you wouldn't be volunteering by yourself, you're placed on this customised team of three to five other people, which yeah. is great because it means you meet some really lovely people, yeah. um, and you meet with the charities director, executive director is what the CEO equivalent is in charities, okay. so you meet with LED once a month, um, only for about two hours, so it's a really manageable experience, um, and you listen to their challenges, and you coach, and you mentor, bring creative ideas, from your many, many years of experience in your own specialised industry that they wouldn't have access to. And I think this is one of the really amazing things about what this programme does, is when you look at charities, everyone knows they have a really tight budget. Yes. They can't spend vast amounts of money on, on employees or operations, yeah. and it means that they don't have equitable access to talent. Yeah. And that is something that I think we all understand is what allows a business to really blossom. Yes. Um, so by bringing business people in and experienced um, corporate employees, they're able to give them that equitable access to talent without having to pay for it themselves. Yes. 
So how do you match um, the mentors with the organisations that you work with? So it's quite a breadth of organisations. It is, it is, yeah. Um, so we spend a lot of time scoping the challenges that they're facing before we kick off a project. Um, that allows my team members to come out and really, I guess, craft that team in a very customised way. Um, the matching is done on a, a variety of different areas, so we look at, obviously, immediately, do they have the experience and expertise that that charity needs, um, but also personality-wise, so are they going to get on really well with the executive director? Right. Is there going to be a really great dynamic there? Yeah. Um, how are they going to get on with the other team members? You need to make sure you don't have four alpha persons, yes. neither do you particularly want four introverts. So we try and make sure there's a really nice mix of leadership styles and personalities. Um, and then, you know, very importantly, trying to make sure that the cause itself resonates with the volunteers. We want them to feel really passionate about the area where they're helping. Yeah, really nice. So what would you say, you touched on um, earlier about the, the benefit of mentors and volunteers mm. meeting with other people what are some mm. of the other benefits that you think do you know what it's it's such a great exercise in honing your soft skills so i think a lot of us have been in companies for larger periods of time perhaps than we'd expected and yeah. it's quite easy to get a bit institutionalized Definitely. and especially during you know what has been a very difficult year for everyone um even more in your bubble than you were before yes and one thing that a lot of our volunteers say to us is it's so nice to get out of my usual headspace and actually solve someone else's problems for a while. You know, we all get sick to death of our own problems That's and our so own true. work challenges. This is a really lovely way of using your expertise to to solve someone else's problems and to think really creatively and stretch and hone your expertise and experience. Because so one one of our mentors said to me, um, I thought it was going to be really easy to help a charity because I think there's a certain, if we're honest, there's a certain impression a lot of us have that oh, we can fix it really quickly, it'll be fine, we can, we can sort it out. Yeah. And, and this particular mentor said, it's like, I thought I knew what I was doing, but it's like you've asked me to do my job with my hands tied behind my back. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> all of the solutions I would normally turn to, you know, oh, we'll get your HR team to help with this, get your Marcoms team to help with that. Yes. There's no Marcoms team, there are none of those support functions. And guess what? There's no money. So how can you think really creatively to solve these challenges? So it just it's such a dynamic exercise to be part of. And you get to see how all the other mentors in the room approach it as well, which is so right. interesting. Because, Inspiring. oh my god, it's like having a brain's trust. You know, suddenly someone who comes from a creative agency will come up with a really interesting solution that you can then take back to your own company and implement if it's something that ever becomes relevant. Yeah, so it's true, take away skills. Yeah, exactly. What I find really interesting, it sounds really inspiring. Um, it, it feels like, like you said, you know, it's, it's working with what you're used to day to day, but mm -hmm. as you put it, with your hands tied behind yeah. your back, you've got to tap back into that passion mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. have for your job to really think outside the box, yeah. come up with new innovative ways mm -hmm. um, but really tap into that essence of why you're doing what you're doing yeah it sounds very refreshing yeah I think people feel quite reinvigorated um, one person said that they went back into the office feeling so energized you know really excited about doing what they did again yes. and actually just one really important thing to say because as I'm saying this you know this all sounds like a lot of work <laughs> and it is it's you know you have to really commit to it but the great thing about what we do and the way the programme is designed mm. is because all of our team come from the corporate sector, so we've all worked in, in across the corporate and non-profit sectors, we understand that there's not that much time to give when yes. you are a busy, you know, whether you're a working parent or whether you know, you're just living your life, yes. there's, there's not a, amount, a lot of time to take outside of your business hours. So we wanted to design a programme that was as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. So we have our own project managers that do all of the organisation on behalf of our volunteers. So okay. when you come and mentor with us, you get assigned a project manager and they then become your kind of volunteering PA. They'll tell you when to turn up at the meetings, they'll set the agenda, they take all the minutes, and most importantly, they follow up with the charity in between meetings yep. to make sure they're maintaining the momentum and getting the work done and 
providing tools and templates or any support they might need wow. so that your time as a volunteer is really protected. Wow. Um, and if you then want to give more time, you're welcome to, but we're very protective over our volunteers' time, so they're not connected directly to the charity yeah. by email. We, we broker all of the conversation until the end of the project. That's so amazing that there's such a structure in place. It really makes structured. it hugely effective. Exactly. And that's, that's why if you're giving your yeah. time, you want it to be effective and efficient and make sure it's not just, uh, you know, loosey-goosey. Like that's the thing because it's such an amazing thing for someone to be willing to give time. Yes. You know, not everyone has that instinct yeah. to give back. Yeah. And when they do, I think we got a bit sick of seeing volunteer time used in such an inefficient way. Right. And it's not that your kind of more traditional volunteering isn't useful. It can be so invaluable, yes. you know, reading to kids handing out food, yeah. but I think if we really are honest with ourselves about the best way to give back, using your business skills is such an effective way of doing it, because it's yes. something the charity can't get from anyone else. Yeah. You know, my my teenage kids could have given out food to kids, yes. but yeah. no one else can give that business expertise and insight that you have from your career. Yeah. So it is using people's time to their highest and best purpose and making sure that they're giving back better, which is what we call yeah. our programs. Right, so um, briefly you touched on uh, the fact that the meetings are very scheduled. Mm -hmm. What is the time commitment? Um, is there a set length for any project? Yeah, I mean, it's not that it's set, it's, it's flexible in a way, but we try to keep it between nine to 12 months. Okay. So it is a longer term engagement, Okay. but that is because, and a lot of people say just, oh my God, this feels like it's gonna be so long, can, can we just dip, can we do a shorter project? But actually, once you're a few sessions in, people are saying, we're never gonna get this done in a year. Can we make wow. it 18 months? You know, because yeah. we really want to get to know the charity. You're doing them an injustice if you don't know them well enough before you start giving advice. Yes, of course. If someone came into your business and said, within a couple of days of talking to you, all oh, right, I know how to do it all. Yeah. There's so much context and nuance you're not getting. Yeah. So by having a longer, deeper dive, it means that the impact is so much higher. Yeah. Um, and we're very hot on monitoring impact and evaluating our work. So we know that it works much better when we have a longer time. So the commitment is anywhere between nine to 12 months, one session a month. It's two hours per session. Wow, that's really not a lot. I thought you were gonna say a lot more than that. No, 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 it's 24 hours a year and it works wow. because of the fact that we have the project managers that do all the behind the scenes work. Yes. So Although you're it not continually chasing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You're not having to do that yourself. Two yeah. hours a month. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, with a setup that is designed to have a huge impact. Exactly. So you really feel that your time is being yeah. used and worthwhile. Yeah. And something that you just touched on, um, Give Back Better, your mm -hmm. program for this yes. year. So that's more geared towards people who are already working within a company, is that right? Yes. So, what we want to do, and um, with all, again, due respect for kind of traditional corporate CSR programs, is encourage businesses to think more strategically about the way that they engage with charities. So Give Back Better is about um, assisting in the charity in a way that is really going to build their capacity and grow them in the long run. So, for example, you could give um, a one-off donation to a charity that your employees nominate for the year, and that's it, hands off. Mm -hmm. The efficacy of that donation is not necessarily going to be as high as we would like it to be. Mm -hmm. So by working with an organization like Talent Trust, we can take whatever donation you want to give mm -hmm. and multiply that impact by bringing in essentially a consultancy team to work with the charity for a year so that when you want to donate to them again, they are so much more effective at spending that money and your donation is going to go so much further and ultimately help so many more people. So I think what the kind of people we want to talk to with this campaign is heads of CSR, heads of L&D who want to invest in different types of programs that will enrich their employees at the same time as giving back to the community. Amazing. Yeah. I'm sure there are so many um, people out there in our audience who are in those roles that love exactly, to hear from exactly. them. Exactly. Well, that's yeah, why we're... Great program. Yeah. Awesome. Um, can you just give us briefly a couple of examples of projects um, that you think have been really successful recently, mm -hmm. just to give people an idea um, of the kinds of things that you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, we've just had 
really lovely. So we follow up with the charities for two years after we work with them. So okay. we have a really long-term relationship with them. And they're all based in Singapore? All based in Singapore, yeah. yeah. All Singaporean charities, um, all working to the benefit of Singaporeans. So it's yeah. a lovely way to kind of connect or reconnect with the community. Yeah. Um, but we've just reconnected with an organisation called DOT, Daughters of Tomorrow. Okay. They're an amazing charity. Um, their ED that we started working with is now an MP. She's done amazing oh, wow. work. But her, her successor has just said back to us and the growth they've had has been spectacular. When we started working with them, they were working with about, oh God, don't kill me if I get the numbers wrong. But from my memory, they were working with about, I think, 60 women um, to help um, low-income women get back into re-employment, get back into employment um, to better sustain their family incomes. Mm. And they were aiming to work, I think they were aiming to double the number within the first year or so, and they ended up tripling. <gasps> oh, wow. And subsequently, they, they're now working with 400 women, I think, oh, was wow. the latest update. From 60. Yeah. That's incredible. Just a couple of years yeah. ago. So yeah. you think about how many more women and how yes. many more children are, are being benefited by that yes. work. It's yes. just amazing. Um, we've also worked with you know, environmental organisations, animal welfare organisations, yes. organisations helping the elderly, the disabled. I mean, we, we are very broad in scope in terms of the charities that we, we work mm -hmm. with. They just need to have the drive to make some change. Mm -hmm. So when people get in touch with you to find out more mm -hmm. and figure out if there's an organisation they can work with, can you request to be partnered with a specific organisation? So you, you can do, um, you can request. We always ask people, you know, what kind of organisations really um, mean something to you. Mm -hmm. But the most important match in that element, in that perspective, is really the skills match. Yeah. So you could be deeply passionate about animal welfare, but actually there isn't an animal welfare charity at the moment that needs your skill set. Yes. We could put you on the team, but you're going to spend a year not doing a lot. Um, whereas actually, say we put you on a, a charity that helps women and children, yeah. and your skill set is called on on a monthly basis, the impact you're going to have is going to be incredible, and you're going to be so much more rewarded by that. Yeah. So um, whilst we do always try and offer people organisation matches that are something that they feel passionately about, mm. um, for us the most important match is, is on skills. Yes, that makes total sense. Mm -hmm. It's more valuable for both parties. Definitely, and actually the two people I'm thinking of who have said to me, one person said to me, I do not want to work with a children's charity. Okay. It's too heartbreaking, please oh. don't work with a children's charity. Yeah. And I said, I'm really sorry, but your skill set and your personality and your dynamic is perfectly suited to this organisation. Yeah. And afterwards she fed back that it was the most rewarding experience that she'd ever engaged with and she was all in and she still I think is in touch with the charity now. So oh, lovely. Yeah. yeah. Trust yeah, us I guess is the is the question is the request sometimes. Makes sense. Yeah. Um I'm gonna ask you to tell our audience um, mm. how uh, they can get in touch with you and while you're doing that I'm going to see if we've got any questions sure. coming in. Fantastic. Um lovely ladies, if you would like to get in touch with Talent Trust, you can go to our website which is talenttrustsingapore.org. Um, there is a contact us form on the website. We're also on Facebook. Um, hopefully, um, we will be tagged as an organisation in that. You can send us a message. Um, LinkedIn, I mean, any of the normal social platforms, but our website is probably the best place to, to catch us. Okay, I am not seeing any questions just now. So is there a um, cut-off time? Do you have like a round of applications or is it all year round? It's or all year round, yeah. So we, we, we're quite flexible in that we launch charity projects as and when we have the right matches. So okay. we might hold, and we always say this to our mentors, you might be waiting for a couple of weeks while we find exactly the right team dynamics. Um, so it's a year round thing. There's no kind of deadline is the good news. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> it, we think it, it is great. I mean, it's, it's so refreshing to hear of an organization which is really trying to make things effective. Like you mm -hmm. say, um, we can all pledge time, but it's very easily um, 
I don't want to say wasted or squandered, those aren't really the right words, but it's... But not maximised. Maximised. Not maximised. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And look, I think, especially in a year, like, I mean, God, we're all sick of talking about COVID, but, you know, I'm seeing more and more articles at the moment about mental health and resilience, yes. Yes. and yes. how much of a toll it's taken on all of our mental health. And giving back is such a wonderful way to improve your mental health. Yeah. And this is feedback that we're getting routinely from our mentors, people saying, so much better just getting out before I've even started my work day I've already done something to help someone else amazing and that is such a rewarding piece in and of itself that I think we've been really amazed at how many more volunteers we've had over COVID I thought we were going to have fewer I thought yeah. that if people were getting involved if, if people were thinking about volunteering they'd want to do just little bits and pieces yeah. but actually we've had so many more people come to us and say I've spent so much time in COVID in lockdown reflecting on my privilege mm. you know I Let's face it, especially with our lovely audience here, successful women, mm. who probably live in lovely houses with our nice partners and potentially kids yeah. who we adore, we still can't wait to get away from them sometimes. <laughs> it still feels tough. Yeah. And then I think a lot of people have been saying, well, while I've been complaining about my own family in the house, yeah. I'm thinking yeah. about you know single parents in a yeah. one-bed rental apartment with four or five kids. How on earth are they coping? And I think when we're spending more time reflecting on our privilege, it does drive people to volunteer. And, and that's certainly the trend that we've seen, which has been amazing. But as a result, I think people's mental health is really improving, which is an incredible kind of offshoot, I guess. Yeah, I think it's a great way to get, as you said earlier, mm -hmm. out of your little bubble and out mm -hmm. of your kind of day-to-day -day problems mm -hmm. and issues. Um, and bridge that gap into the community around yeah, us. Definitely. So thank you so much. Um, we, I'm just going to double check any last uh, questions. Is there a specific level of skill you need, junior or senior, or can anyone get involved Good in health? question. So we do generally like to have people who are sort of at least five to ten years into their career. Okay. That, that is sense. because they need to have that breadth and depth of experience. So if a random challenge pops up, it's super helpful if someone has enough experience that they are likely to have tackled something similar. Yeah. So we do kind of ask for people who are a bit more senior. Um, yeah. Having said that, if we, you know, there are lots of subject areas where you can be a real subject matter expert, a bit niche at a younger age. So social media, you know, we've got a couple of much younger volunteers who yeah. are so dynamic <laughs> and amazing. Yeah. So um, you know, if you're interested, do drop us a message and we can and we can assess and have a look. Sounds amazing. I'm definitely going to have a chat with you now about um, how I can help <laughs> and um, work on a, on a project going forwards. I, I just think it's such a fantastic way to get involved with the community. Thank you for coming and speaking to us today. Thank you for having me. Um, and you're okay to hang around for a little bit in case yeah, people have questions to want to um, DM directly and ask us offline. Thanks very much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. and. Um, read all the information about how to get in touch with Tess at Talent Trust in the post. See you next time. Thanks everyone, bye.